What's up everybody, how's it going? If you're a software engineer watching this video, you're about to get promoted. That's right, in this video, I'm gonna be sharing with you seven, seven, I can never do this whole counting shit, seven tips about how you can get promoted as a software engineer. I'm gonna be drawing from my experience getting promoted at Google, from my experience seeing other people get promoted at Google and Facebook, just hearing people talk about promotions in the field of software engineering, and I'm sure that you're gonna find at least one of these tips insightful or useful for your own promotion journey. Now, if you're trying to get promoted as a software engineer, there is one prerequisite Requisite, which is that you first have to be a software engineer. And if you want to be a software engineer, well, you're going to have to pass technical interviews. That's coding interviews and systems design interviews. And you know what to do if you're prepping for those. You're going to use my company, AlgoExpert. Go to algoexpert.io and use the promo code CLEM, C-L-E-M, for a discount on the platform. Now that that's out of the way, let's jump into the seven tips. Sit back, relax, follow me on LinkedIn, and let's dive into them. Tip number one is that it is very important for you to be intimately familiar with the rubric so to speak, or the criteria that your company or team is going to be using to promote its software engineers. Super important, I see far too many software engineers committing the tragic error of doing a type of work really well in their field of software engineering on the job, but a type of work that the company or team doesn't actually value for promotion. For example, imagine you're working at Google and you tell yourself, I'm gonna fix a thousand bugs. I'm gonna fix a ton of bugs. I'm gonna write code super fast, send out tons of pull requests. Well, that's great, but it turns out that if you're a software engineer at Google, that is not gonna get you promoted. Why? Because it's not part of their rubric, the criteria that they use to promote software engineers. So if you work at a big tech company like Google or Facebook, it's very easy to find the rubric that they use for promotions. Just look it up internally at Google. It's gonna be the software engineering career ladder. You're gonna see what an L3, L4, L5 engineer, all the other engineering levels, what their expectations are. You can also ask your manager, and if you work at a small smaller company, maybe a company that doesn't have everything super easily accessible, then just ask around. Ask people who did get promoted, see what they did, even just to look around. Sometimes you don't even need to ask, you can just kind of observe what other people do. But the point is, be intimately familiar with this rubric. Now, once you've found this rubric, you can move on to tip number two, which is to perform consistently so at the next level, at the level or the role that you're trying to get promoted into. Now, what do I mean here? Because this is a very important point, so listen carefully. I mean that you do not want, let's say we're talking about Google, right, a Google software engineer, you do not want to be a fantastic, an excellent, the best ever L3 software engineer if you're trying to get promoted to L4. You wanna be an L3 software engineer who is already performing at the L4 level, already fulfilling the expectations or even surpassing them of an L4 level. Because once you're doing that, the company or the team is gonna say, well, okay, it totally makes sense to promote this person because they are already an L4 software engineer. If you're just an excellent L3 software engineer, you will get an excellent performance rating as an L3 software engineer. You'll get maybe strongly exceeds or superb, but you will not get promoted. So you wanna be performing at that next level or at the next role, whatever it is that you're trying to get promoted into, consistently so already. All right, so you've got the first two tips down. You know what the rubric is to get promoted. You know that you have to be performing at the next level to get promoted. But how do you perform at the next level? Because for example, let's say you're going for an L5 software engineering role at Google, a senior software engineering role, you're gonna have to be taking on very complex projects, projects that have a wide reach, that help a lot of people or touch a lot of people, that have a lot of impact. And the truth is that those projects are few and far between. There aren't that many of them. In other words, there might not be that many opportunities for you to perform at the next level, especially the higher up you go. So this brings me to tip number three, which is that you want to put yourself in situations where you will be more likely to get opportunities to perform at the next level. This actually ties back to something that I've been saying in some of my recent videos of basically seeking out luck, of putting yourself in positions where you're more likely to be lucky. And here it's basically the same thing. Go to meetings, talk to other teams, talk to your manager, see if you can find projects or at least increase your chances of finding a project 
That is going to be relevant to you. That is going to allow you to perform at that next level. Very important. Put yourself in those situations. Make yourself more likely to get those opportunities. Now, naturally, this brings me to tip number four, which is that you want to make sure that you seize those opportunities when they present themselves to you. It's very common for people to get opportunities, but not to seize them under the guise of, oh, maybe this is a bit scary. Maybe it's going to make me uncomfortable. It's going to pull me out of my comfort zone. No, you want to seize the opportunities that present themselves to you. If you look at any person who's very successful in their career and anybody who got promoted recently, for example, you'll often see that they were people who knew when and how to seize opportunities that presented themselves to them. So not only do you want to put yourself in front of those opportunities, but you want to seize them. Tip number five, this is one that a lot of you aren't going to like, and I know this for a fact because when I was at Google or at Facebook, I could tell that a lot of software engineers especially just don't like this aspect of work, but it's very important, especially if you're trying to get promoted, and it's that you have to have other people have visibility into your work. It's very important that your manager, that your peers, a good number of your peers, have visibility and good visibility into your work. Now, that doesn't mean that you have to do office politics or that you have to be a suck up or something like that. No, that's what people have a misconception about. No, all that it means is that People should be aware of your work. People should be aware of the impact of your work. So maybe that means having a good relationship with your manager, having pretty frequent one-on-ones with them, or you know, giving them updates, making sure that they know what you're doing, making sure that, again, your peers know what you're doing, especially if you're going for higher-up promotions like an L5, L6. If you're a software engineer at Google, you know this for a fact because you've seen at performance, right, at Perf, that you need to have a lot of peer reviews and more and more the higher up you go, very important. Get that visibility. Make sure that you're collaborating with your teammates. You should be doing that anyway, but make sure that you are. Make sure that they know how much effort you're putting into your work. Make sure that they know the results of your work. Very important visibility. Tip number six. This is one that I've mentioned in a previous video, but it's still worth re-mentioning. Very important. It's that you should identify your strengths and weaknesses, and you should make sure that your weaknesses don't pull you down, make sure that they're not completely ignored, but triple down on your strengths. Your strengths are the things that you're naturally good at. And the more you triple down on them, the more you will absolutely excel at them. You will really be an outlier in those strengths, and that will play to your advantage. So the example that I've always given for me when I was at Google is that my weakness was more on the technical side. I wasn't the best coder in the world or the smartest developer in the world. So I made sure to keep my coding skills sharp. I made sure to work on technically complex projects, but I didn't overdo it, if that makes sense. On the other hand, I knew that my strengths lied in my communication skills, my leadership potential, managerial skills, and so I tripled down on those, really exploited them, took advantage of them, made sure that I really like shined in those areas and that worked in my favor. So triple down on your strengths, all the while making sure that your weaknesses don't pull you down. Now finally, last but not least, tip number seven. This is a very simple one, not rocket science, but I do believe that it's very important and it has to do with working hard, putting in a lot of work, especially if you're trying to get promoted. Hey, getting promoted is not an everyday occurrence. Getting promoted is not a surefire thing. To get promoted means that you deserve to effectively be likely paid more, to have more responsibility, to have a better title, right? So it's not something that's a given. You gotta earn it. And to earn it, you gotta put in the work. And the higher up you go, the more this just goes without saying. If you're going for an L6 position at Google, an L7, an L8, an L9, you better believe that you're going to have to put in the work, right? You better believe that it's not going to be given to you for free. It's not going to be handed to you on a silver platter. You're going to need to put in a ton of work. So these are my seven tips. I hope that you found them insightful. If you did, don't forget to smash the like button. If you didn't, still smash the like button. Comment what you thought about them in the comments below. Do follow me on LinkedIn and Twitter if you enjoy short form written content. Instagram if you like pictures. And otherwise, I will see you in the next video.